Hello everyone, I'm Tom. It's been years since this coronavirus disruption started. I've been taking this time to eat beef jerky and talk to you on the internet. I'm not an expert or a food critic, I just like beef jerky. But this vlog has been good fun, and it's letting me explore some fun ideas with you, especially regarding game design. So today I'm featuring some quality beef jerky given to me by my nephews, John and Cohen. Thank you, John and Cohen. So here we are, October 9, just actually got back from visiting the fam in Houston. Um, at least John and Cullen and their, and their uh, father, Dennis. Um, <coughs> and they were all so good to me. And, uh, but I mean, you know, the uh, global news is not all that great with this horrible new attack on Israel. Um, I mean, you know, wish it weren't happening. Totally sucks, but, um, you know, this tiny little silly jerky video is, I believe, number 66. Um, and what do we have to talk about today? Uh, something that's been on my mind lately, not a bad way or anything, um, which is the VTTs, or Virtual Tabletops. This is basically a piece of software that helps you when you want to play Dungeons & Dragons with your friends over the internet. So, I mean, normally, or at least the standard for Dungeons and Dragons for the longest time was the dinner table. Everyone sat around the table and played Dungeons and Dragons and looked at each other and rolled dice and filled out a character sheet and picked up heavy books and read them. Um, but the modern age, the 21st century is here, and you can play online with your friends, which I have done. But I have not actually used a VTT. I've just used, you know, Zoom and theater of the mind, as they call it. <coughs> but, um, as you can see from the picture, um, virtual tabletops bring a lot to the table. They can give you colorful maps and uh, excellent indicators of where your characters are, and they can roll your virtual dice for you in pretty ways. Um, there's actually a ton that virtual tabletops can do for the player and for the dungeon master. And they're extremely popular, which is why they're like a dozen different brands of virtual tabletop. And very recently, Wizards of the Coast, the direct controller company of uh, Dungeons and Dragons, has uh, put out the first version of their official virtual tabletop, which most of the people that I've seen talking about it say is not all that impressive, at least not compared to other virtual tabletops. And it's an interesting space because um, there's absolutely no doubt that people will continue to play Dungeons and Dragons online and will continue to enjoy Dungeons and Dragons and uh, will in, and do enjoy the added value that virtual tabletops bring to the table. Um, you know, it's just you know, one of those things. Good product is always going to be used no matter what. And there's plenty of competition, so people try to use the best one. Or sometimes just the one they're, they're familiar with. Um, so virtual tabletops are, are good for exactly that kind of thing. And some of them are more graphical than others. Some of them more, are more 3D than others. Uh, many of them have impressive structures so that they can be useful in more than just Dungeons & Dragons but many different game systems. Um, so they're very cool. Uh, a big wrinkle that many people online have been talking about is a game that just came out over the summer called Baldur's Gate 3, which is um, it's a really interesting game because it's very, very true to Dungeons & Dragons. It's, it's run, it does the whole Dungeons & Dragons rule set. It's Dungeons & Dragons, straight up. Um, but it's designed for... To, to play through the computer-generated uh, missions and storyline, uh, whether you're one person or you're playing with a small group of people. Uh, however, it's also very moddable, uh, and it's lovely. It's, it's very graphical, it's very 3D, it's, uh, the user interface is great. Uh, everyone thinks very highly of it as a piece of software. It's amazing. Uh, so because it's moddable, many people have made the point that it's not going to be too much longer before a mod comes out that simply turns it into another VTT, another virtual tabletop. So that instead of playing through the 
the the dungeons and the the storyline campaign that came with the game you and your dungeon master can play together in real time but other than that it's still the same game um and it already has multiplayer game play and uh, it already has uh, it already adheres very strictly to dungeons and dragons so why not why isn't it or why won't it be the uh the vtt of choice for dungeons and dragons players that's a really good question uh so i think that this is a very dynamic space i think the idea of the virtual tabletop and what it is how people play with it um and and which one is going to kind of win in the marketplace is very dynamic and very exciting right now um and that's I think it's just interesting. So, but, you know, this show is not really about virtual tabletops or anything. It's about jerky. And I happen to have another big pack of Ortega jerky given to me by my nephews, um, which now we're going to try. Now, interestingly enough, this is the green chili beef jerky. I don't really know what that means. Does that mean it's hot? Does it mean it's not hot? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. So, I've got my can of soda here. I'm going to crack it open just in case I need it. Um, and I'm going to crack open my uh, my jerky here. Good jerky. It smells about like the last time. You know, this is the first time we did this jerky from Ortega's jerky. Uh, and we found it was very crispy and thin and very potato chip like. Uh, so I expect that again. The only question is the seasoning. So, oh, that's a little bit too big. Come on, you. Give me a piece I can fit into a video. All right. I've got a piece of jerky here. I'm going to eat it. So far, no heat at all. Hmm. It goes into your mouth like a potato chip, but it doesn't stay that way. Once you start chewing it, it becomes more like regular jerky. It was still quite soft. Mm. <laughs> okay. So far, so mild. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> okay. Well, while my mouth is finishing that, I think we should look at my old, my, my last video, um, because Adam Para once again commented, and I would definitely like to uh, uh, see what he said here. He says, I'm a big fan of the Fallout series. In Fallout 2, there was a similar exploit you could continually steal from a jet vendor. I played from Dust Fleet, and yes, it does look like Homeworld. I crowdfunded Homeworld 3, and I'm super excited about it. I painted myself into a corner, so I need to restart my campaign. Yeah, so, yeah, Homeworld is definitely, the, you know, a lot of people love that game series. It's very, uh, very 3D, very, uh, very much a space, real-time strategy game. Um, again, lots and lots of of fans um, uh, really have always enjoyed that game. Um, I never got into it that much, but I always thought I should. On the other hand, real-time strategy has never been my super first choice. Uh, I've always been more of a 4X person, which is to say things like uh, um, Civilization. And uh, um, I've been actually playing some... What I've been playing recently, um, Stellaris is what I've been playing recently, uh, and that's been kind of fun. Um, so, um, yeah, so here we are uh, with jerky that was mild, uh, simple and mild. I would say this Ortega green chili jerky is uh, didn't kick me at all. Um, Again, like the other Ortega jerky, very much kind of jerky potato chip. Very thin, very dry, very crispy. Um, 
And that's about all I have to say about that. But thank you for joining me. And uh, I'll make another video soon. Thanks, everybody.